we're going to the phone lines to talk with a political strategist, Ms. Uh, Debbie Giorgiatos. Did I say your last name correctly? You did. I should send you flowers or something. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure I did. I was staring at it like, oh, gosh, I hope I say this correctly. Okay, so, Debbie, there's a new book out. Now, first and foremost, uh, top of the news on AP right now is that, you know, Hillary and Bill, they're making lots of money, and they have for several years. And then you look at Politico, and they're reporting that Hillary is under attack, and her character's being assassinated. At least that's what's coming from her camp. Now we've got this book, which is very timely. Uh, by author Ronald Kessler, defending Secret Service agents and making some sensational claims about former presidents in, in this book. Uh, it's called The First Family Detail, Secret Service Agents Reveal the Hidden Lives of Presidents. And, of course, Bill Clinton is a number one in this one. He sure is. And, you know, actually, this book, Ron Kessler actually put this book out in August of 2014. And, and I think only real insider types listen to it. But what came out recently is a paperback version and an epilogue. He has more details, and a lot of what's drawing people's attention to this is that it's saying, you know, Clinton is kind of famous. Bill Clinton is kind of famous for his extramarital dalliances. But this is ongoing right underneath Hillary's nose as her campaign rolls along. I think it's, it's, it could not be, you were exactly right, Wendy, it could not be more timely to release this book to talk about what's happening right now in their lives. And the question is for political people, what does that mean to her campaign? Well, what does it mean indeed? But you have to wonder, what did it mean during the presidency when, you know, it all unraveled that the president was using the Oval Office, Oval Office as his as play place? You know, she, she, it wasn't like she decided that's enough. I don't want to be associated with you. All right. You know, for people who value marriage and and um, you know, kind of the, the monogamy, the, the covet, uh, the, you know, the covenant of marriage, this is, you look at Hillary and you realize this marriage is just not like what most people think marriage is. This is her, it's a kind of a contract, a working relationship where she feels she benefits, and I think she does, and he has the cover of uh, claiming to be married. But during his time in the Oval Office, I think a lot of us should be thinking right now about all those people who can now vote in 2016 who were not even aware of any of his uh, conduct all during his presidency. This, this stuff, engaged in his extramarital behavior, it started when they were engaged, before they were married. He was cheating years and years, and all the way through their Oval Office time. I think our younger voters, this might give them a little different picture of Hillary Clinton because not only did she stay in this marriage and kind of give him cover, she actually protected him. She was enabling him to her bimbo eruption squad um, and if you're listening, don't know about that, you might want to talk about that, her bimbo eruption squad efforts. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But yeah, I do want to mention, though, if you look at Hillary's uh, stand by your man type of stance when it comes to her marriage, it is a little bit old school. But I think there's some merit to it in some people's minds that even though this person is not valuing you, obviously, is not even valuing himself you have decided that you've made a marriage a covenant and you're sticking to it. Is that not what comes to the forefront in people's minds anymore, like it would have done maybe with couples of the 50s? You know, I do exactly right. I think in the 50s that was a stand by your man and just whatever he does, you do stand with it. I think what people, I remember when he was president and my more liberal friends who support, and when he was running for president, my more liberal friends who supported him, their take on it was, look, if she, Hillary's okay with his conduct, who am I to judge? That wow. was kind of a modern version. Of that. Wow. And, and I, yeah, I would say you can't compartmentalize integrity or honesty. You, you can't say, well, in this aspect of his life, he's profoundly dishonest, and, um, but in the rest of his life, I'm sure we can trust him as president. I, I always thought your character kind of is or it isn't. We're speaking with Debbie Giorgiatos. She's a political strategist, and we're talking about a, a book – by Ronald Kessler that was put out, as Debbie said, in 2014 and since then has had, what, what did you say, a paperback and then... An epilogue. An added epilogue. To it. Thank you. An epilogue added to it because the president has not stopped, well, the former president has not stopped cheating. Bill Clinton is still cheating on his wife as she campaigns for the presidency in 2016. In fact, on Politico this morning, 
I read, not political, excuse me, on Daily Mail this morning, I read that one of the nicknames that Bill has for Hillary with his girlfriends on the side is Hilla the Hun. How could you move forward thinking, this is what my husband tells people about me. This is what he calls me. Yes, you know, as painful as it would sound to people who were in a normal marriage, and I'm sure she doesn't like it, but not because it personally hurts her. It just makes her look bad in the campaign trail. I really do think there's their marriages, or my perception of it is, it's just a, a working relationship where she benefits from his far better campaign personality. He's more engaging. People like to talk to him when he goes to events. He just can't get enough of talking to the people. And so that warmth of him, or people perceive it as warmth, uh, makes her look better. And you know, she's a very dislikable person on a personal level. Her, she doesn't like to talk to people. She doesn't like to really have to sit down with them during the campaign. So she benefits from their marriage. But as to whether the Hill of the Hun thing, I think it embarrasses her more than personally hurts her. But you know what I do hope about this whole incident? No, that, what? what do you, <laughs> tell me, please. I hope, I hope that people who think that the Democrat Party and Hillary as their standard bearer stands for, you know, protecting women. They are exposing this alleged you know, campus culture of rape. I really hope people take another look at this because she's not only not defending women, all the women that her husband has, and some of them, many of it was, much of it was consensual, some of it was not consensual, his, his uh, behavior outside their marriage, not consensual, and, and another person would have been charged with a crime. You have to ask yourself, is Hillary really the person who's standing up for women? She was part of suppressing them, telling them, threatening them if they told their stories to the media. Yeah, she was very much an enabler. That. Yeah, let's talk about that. You said there's some kind of bimbo, what's, what did you call it? Well, during Bill Clinton's presidency, when some of the stories started to come out, Monica Lewinsky and Juanita Broderick and a bunch of them, they had what was called inside the White House the Bimbo Eruption Squad. It was basically... Hillary at the helm, telling them you're going to shut down these women who are going to embarrass Bill and his campaign. And there are stories, in fact, on Lucianne, I don't know if you happen to ever check out Lucianne, but Lucianne Goldberg talks about Hillary's enforcers, her detectives, would approach these women whom Bill had harassed or become involved with, um, take them out to coffee, shove a piece of paper across the table and say, here, sign this. And let's just say they never had anything to do with Bill Clinton. And this was this has been going on through their whole married life. She you think that you to, think this paper that she had them sign was kind of a non-disclosure sort of thing? Right. It's it, you know, essentially saying, but not really non-disclosure. It's saying you're going to say that nothing ever happened. Ah. Uh-huh. So you're going to lie. You're going to lie. No well, you that. know, I'm a firm believer, and you know, it's sad but true. I'm a firm believer that during Whitewater, the uh, the Super couple, let's call them, <laughs> um, um, had a lot to do with the deaths of those people, and we'll never know. We'll never truly know. But it's just a hunch. It's one of those gut feelings, and I don't mind saying it. Um, but like I said, it'll never be proven or anything. So I can't, I can't imagine it wouldn't be true that there'd be some paper put across a table, you know, to a quote oh. bimbo telling them they're going to lie from now on. If they know what's good for them, that's what they'll do. This, this, this man and this woman, they have uh, so much money and so much power and influence. It's very scary. It is scary. And, you know, one other whole aspect of this story is the subject of media bias because in the last week the media has been hounding uh, Ivana Trump, the um, former wife, of presidential candidate Donald Trump uh-huh. about something she said 25 years ago during their divorce where she, 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 I think she first said rape and then she walked that back. She really didn't rape me. I just felt violated. Now she's saying, no, 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 everything's fine. But the media is trying to bring this up now and getting in his face about something 25 years ago. Well, Juanita Broderick was claimed she was raped by Bill Clinton. And she tells the story. She's told it on television. She's told on the air. She hasn't changed that story. And it's an interesting study in media bias because I don't think any reporter is going to ask Bill or Hillary anything about Juanita Broderick. It's like the the Clinton rule applies. No, it's sweep it under the carpet. 
kind of conversation. We've got to go, Debbie. I'm sorry. I wish we had more time for you, but thank you so much for joining us this morning to talk about Bill and his extramarital affairs and what's going on with the Hillary campaign right now, even during 2016. I mean, even during the campaign for 2016. It's incredible. Thank you so Wendy, much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. WNA Morning News Time 652.